Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Power Series. If you haven't already, I recommend that you go back and watch all of the previous videos from the team so far so that you're up to date on the resource and app that we're looking to build by the end of this series. Today, we're going to cover off the basics of the Canvas side. Thanks to Dan and Alex, we've got all of the solutions and the tables that we need. But what we now need to focus on is building this Canvas front end so that we can actually utilize the resourcing app from an internal perspective. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to swap myself over so you can see the end product. Now, as we've got all of our back end nicely done, thanks to the, the videos earlier in this series from Dan and Alex, what we now need to focus on is building this front end Canvas app. And it's really this Canvas app that I've used internally, as you would have seen in the intro video, that's allowed me to start resourcing on a much more fluid level. To do this, there's a few things I'm going to go through in this first video. And then over the next couple of videos, we're going to focus on some of the complex formula around the patch statements, around how we collect the five days, around how we collect individuals, and also how we do the time zones and the, the baseline kind of calculations behind financials, etc. The first thing that we need to do, and one of my favorite things to do, and if you've ever watched any of my other webinars before, it's the first thing that I'll do when I, when I open a Canvas, is we're going to go to office.com. And from office.com, what we're going to do here is we're going to open up our Power Apps window. Now, you can obviously get to that through the make.powerapps.com if you wanted to. And you can see here that I'm nicely slotted into the P365 Power Series environment that Dan and Alex were set up previously in their previous videos. Now, I'm going to go to apps on the left hand side. And from apps, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself a new app and I'm going to create a canvas and I'm going to create a tablet and I'm going to call this resourcing app. I'm going to click create. Now, once I've created this, just personal choice, I will go and add it into the relevant solutions in the back so that I now add an existing and we'll do that towards the end of the video. But for now, what I'm going to do is first and foremost, I'm going to participate in some naming conventions. Now, naming conventions are extremely useful once you start adding in lots of inputs. So I'm just going to call this um, home to keep the screens. There's no point in me putting SCR there. I'm just going to call that home for now. Now, what I'm going to do here, just to make sure that it's saved and everything that I need to do with it, is I'm just going to click Save. So this really then logs it into the back end of the Power Apps window. Now, I also, first thing that, as I mentioned earlier, if you've ever seen any of my other webinars, what I'll do here is I usually add a new blank screen at the back, and I'll call this Items. And then I add a new blank screen in the back, and I call this Admin. Now, what I like to do here is I like to start creating branded items and branded inputs. The reason for that is because I've definitely been bitten in the past when it comes to a client um, and you need to rebrand or you need to change the font or you need to change the color and something just doesn't, you got to, you, I don't want to have to go through all of those inputs. So I like to do it this way instead. Now what I'll do here is I usually create a few different things. So I'll create myself a label and then what I will do here is I usually change the font and I might make this one a bold and I might make this 20 um, and That'll do for now as an example. And then I'll give this a name of label title. And then I'll make another one, which might then come down here. And I'll make this as a normal font and I'll make it size 14. Now this would become label text. Now I would then go off and I would create more labels and maybe some buttons, which we'll do in a second. But the purpose of this is because what I'm now going to do is I'm gonna take both of these I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste them into the items. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at label tech, look at label title underscore one, and I'm going to go into advanced. And in here, I'm going to look at pretty much everything. So color, and I'm going to refer to label title dot color. I'm going to take that and I'll probably also take disable color. And I'll take press color, even though we don't really need it, this one. I'll take hover color. We don't need that one either. I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to skip those for purpose of demonstration. I don't think we really need fill, but I'll put it in anyway. Um, font, we definitely need font. We definitely need size. We definitely need font weight. Um, and that probably is all we need for now. Now, what that means, if I then put label title underscore use, this now means that if I go into the back, into my admin screen, and if the client says, well, I don't like Sego UI, instead, I like Lato Black for my titles. Oh, wrong one. 
I like Lato Black for my titles. Well, fantastic. I can make it Lato Black. I could also make it size 30. Now, everything that I then use around the app will have been this version that's been copied, which means the branding is automatically updated. So if I just carry that forward. Now, apologies for the fast forward there. I thought it would just be easier for me to finish this off without you needing to watch me create every single piece. Um, as you can see in my item screen here now, I've just gone off and I've created all of these other text things that I want. I've also created some icons just in case I ever need to copy any icons. And I've created some inputs too, because I'm not a big fan of the default blues. So I've just created some inputs and I've based these actually off of a Microsoft example within the Power Apps area, which I think is the training one. And I, re I really like how they've been branded. Now, obviously there are things like the, um, the creator kit and Christine covers some fantastic visualization pieces. If you've not seen Christine on um, YouTube yet, then I definitely recommend you Google Christine and some CSS with Power Apps. Um, but in the back of my admin screen, you can see I've carried that through again. And I've just given myself the exact same pieces so that all of my items here that I'll then copy off wherever I need to, as I mentioned, have just got label title and they're relating to the pieces in the back. Now, one thing I have done that I did need to do during that fast forward, so apologies, is I did need to create myself some variables. So the reason for this is because the branding can always change. So instead, what I've done here on my app, on start, which is essentially what mean what happens when you put it into the on start, it is the when the when the app is loading up, this is where it will start to pull in things before the users start using the app. So it's a great place to set some branding variables. In here, I've given myself a color primary, a secondary and a tertiary, and I've just put some RGBAs in there. We've got a blue, we've got a gray, and we've got a lighter gray. I highlight this one too. Now we've then got these primary text and primary text fades, which I put in text version RGBAs. Now the reason for this, and whilst you can definitely get better examples from Christine, I'm not gonna try and cover any of this because I'll do it no justice, is because in my HTML input here, so this is a HTML input, HTML text input. In here, what we've got is we've got the ability to place in a gradient. And you can see I'm now referring to that HTML color primary text and primary text fade. And that's allowing me to do the blue through to white, essentially. And it's just a nice thing that I like to have if I ever like to use it. And sometimes I'll put it up at the top and then I'll utilize it as a header. So that's the purpose of why I like to put one in the back for me. Now, Moving this forward, there are a few things within this new designer that we need to be aware of. Things have changed since we all started to play with Canvas apps previously. And if you're new to Canvas apps, then that's absolutely a great thing. And if you're from the, uh, from the older versions of Canvas apps, then you'll have noticed that the menu bar has completely changed. One of the biggest changes there is how we look at collections and variables. Now, we've got this ellipsis on the right-hand side of the menu where we can start to get to those variables. If I go into my variables here, I can see all of these um, branding variables I've got. It's great that we've got this search in here. So if I ever needed the primary, then I can find it. Um, and you've then got the ability through this menu to get to collections, but also back through the three dots and into collections. Now I've not made any collections at the moment. That's gonna come in the next video, but I thought I'd just highlight them here. A collection, for those that have never used collections before, is ultimately us pulling data from somewhere and storing it locally which allows from a performance or a speed perspective when you're utilizing the app, just makes everything a little bit quicker. And that's why we would use collections. Now, to close this video off, because we've done the branding in the back, so I've got my admin area with all of my text variables and, and icons and buttons that I might use. I've also got the items that I can then start to copy and paste. Again, as an example, it would allow me to take two of these, copy them into the home, and then I could utilize them. So I could now say, I don't know, uh, welcome to the resource app. And with that, I would then be able to change, um, please use this resource. Let's make that a bit wider. And then obviously as we, as we kind of demonstrated, so I've copied them directly from admin and then I would be able to come in here. And if I wanted to, I could then change that to Arial and that would then affect the front. So that's the purpose of what we've done there. However, what I'm going to do to close this video out is I'm going to set up that front screen as we saw over here. So we've just got the, the gradient. We've got this, which I'm going to cheat on. Christine will be mad, but I'm going to cheat on this. And I'm just going to paste a couple of these in and I'm going to close the video out so that next one we can start to go through some of that complex formula. Now, 
What we do have is in my items, I've got my gradient. So I'm going to copy my gradient over and we're going to place that here. What I might do here is just call that HTML header. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to cheat. Christine will tell me off, but I am um, an old school uh, and I'm just going to upload what we call um, this background. And I'm going to go to my app on start and I'm going to set a variable, which is bar background. And we're going to call that background bar white. Don't tell Christine I've done that, which then means I can go to my ad. I can use insert if needs be, but I've just got used to it here. Media and image, place that on the screen. And I'm going to refer that to my bar background as the image. So that's the image of bar background. I'm going to make that bigger and put that up here. And then I'm going to stretch it. Um, and I'm going to have to run my on start so it actually comes through. Then this will allow me to, if I make that bigger and I make this a little bit bigger, you can now see I've got some of those curved edges, which I just I personally like. So from there, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take one of these, one of these, I'm going to take the text input, I'm going to take the button. I don't think I need that actually for now, but I'll take it anyway, copy paste, and I'll place these over here. And this is where I could now start to do whatever I need to do. Now, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to walk through how we get the functionality from the tables. So these are the tables that we need to collect. We're going to walk through the functionality behind being able to collect a person into a gallery. And then we're also going to walk through the functionality behind how we then assign one person on any given date. So maybe next week for two days and how we then load that through into a gallery here. But I'm going to cut this video short now just because I wanted a few extra tips on how we'd set up the front end before we do any of the complex pieces. So make sure you're subscribed, make sure your notifications are on. And then next week, let's visit some complex formulas.